Turpin, much romanticised through legend, was in fact an infamous highwayman, murderer and convict convicted horse thief. He was tried and executed in York, assuring his place in English history and being forever linked with the city of York. So I tried to do this uh, vlog once before, but I wasn't happy with how it turned out. So I thought I'd have another go to it. And this time I've travelled to the city of York to trace the burial place of uh, Dick Turpin and uh, to have another go at Harry B's challenge. Well hello YouTube and welcome to York. I've come here for the day with my wife shopping so you can guess where she is. <laughs> but uh, some time ago I was asked to do a little challenge by Harry B and that was to find the grave of Dick Turpin. This is Piccadilly in York and Turpin's grave is that way. I don't think I built any so let's go and see if we can find him. Legendary highwayman who was hanged uh, at, um, well basically what was York race course uh, when I get home I'll put the remainder of the research I've done onto this vlog and then we'll see what we come up with as you can see York is full of lots of lovely old buildings like this it's a place I'm really fond of lots of affair uh, history in York. This is one of the big ones, the Merchant Adventurers Hall. One of the, apparently one of the finest medieval guild halls in the world and still in use onwards to find Dick Turpin one of the things about York is its layered history through Georgian history, Victorian history, Georgian history back through the Tudors it's been a centre of government for Yorkshire the best part of a thousand years, probably longer. And all the way through the centuries, the one resounding thing that's stood for York is this. The Minster. He's at it again with that drill. And uh, just to show you that uh, what, what I was saying about York having a, a Roman connection, there's a statue here to Constantine the Great, 247 to 337 AD. And that's the Roman connection. that I'm showing you once stood in the entrance to the headquarters to the uh, sixth Roman legion and it was found collapsed when this when they were building uh, in the um, excavations of the south is it a south transit yeah trans the south transit was found lane where it collapsed so it was given by the dean and chapter of the York Civic Trust and uh, it was AD 71 when it was put in place on to find Dick Turpin that's the back of the what was the old prison which is where Turpin was held
flags flying. That's the back of the, uh, the museum. Get back to its Norman history, and then you think, well, it can't go any further, but there's a Saxon history. Then the Vikings, and before the Vikings, we had the Romans. In the trees over there, which we'll see later on, is the keep. Castle in your. Now you can clearly see what was the York Prison and is now the York Museum. That's where they held Turpin when they brought him to York Assizes for his trial. I say it's called the Castle Museum now, but in there there's still the cell that they held Turpin in. Mill Street. This is what I was looking for, the disused churchyard that Terpin is purportedly supposed to be buried in. Excuse me, bouncing about as I'm walking. I'm finding it hard to steady the camera. And in the middle of a busy city, look at that, that there's an old gatehouse there. It's just intertwined with the modern buildings. So this is St George's Church that's here, or what's left of it. It's a Catholic church. And behind me here, this is the graveyard that used to be a part of it. The church, like a lot of things, have been absorbed within the city, as you can see, look. Very rural area. Let's go see if we can find Dick. City walls at the end of the road. And there's the graveyard, and as you can see, they've laid the stones down. And he's in a nice place, look, under this tree. And there he is, John Palmer, otherwise Richard Turpin, the notorious highwayman and horse stealer, executed at Tyburn, April 7th, 1739, and buried in St George's Churchyard. There is some dispute as whether he's actually here. So let me tell you the story, just very rough outline. He was a part of the notorious Essex gang. Uh, he was purported to be involved in a couple of uh, murders, none of which were proven. He um, eventually had a reward on his head for over a hundred pounds and he fled as a result to, he went, I think he actually went into the Fens to start with, Peterborough way, and then slowly made his way north. Um, he was involved in a lot of um, breaking into houses and all that kind of stuff and he finally ended up at Bruff, in the ferry boat in at Bruff. Um, he actually, apparently, according to what I've been reading, he, he was involved in a couple of robberies that went wrong. And out of sheer frustration, when he went back to his digs, went inside and uh, there was cockfighting going on. And apparently shot a prize rooster, uh, which uh, the landlord owner was, was very put out about. And as a result of it, he got reported to the local magistrates. There's a lot, a lot more stuff that I could tell you um, there was a letter written to try and uh, excuse him for what he did, um, prove that he was John Palmer and not Turpin, but his <laughs> they wrote the letter to his brother and his brother wouldn't pay the postage on the letter, and so as a, as a result it, it went unread. Anyway, long story short, he ended up in the local uh, uh, house of um, ill repute in Beverley, uh, detained, but it was too small to hold him, and so he was sent in chains to York, castle where he was subsequently tried for uh, horse stealing which in those days was a capital offence 
he was found guilty and he was taken to Neyburn in York, which is Tyburn, I think they call it. It, it. Basically, it was where the gallows were and it was out on the race course. Uh, they didn't hang him in the way we would know him. It was, it was called the short drop. And basically, um, he climbed up on a ladder and jumped off and they strangled to death. It didn't break their necks. It was a horrible way to die. Subsequently, uh, he was buried. He in St George's but unfortunately he fell foul of grave robbers. Anyway, the local people in York were disgusted by what had happened and they got his body back and he was reinterred here. And they have, they have it said he was interred in quicklime to prevent further uh, disturbance of his body. But they are, uh, Harry, uh, challenge accepted. First time once a good, because I went very well. But I finally managed to get to York, albeit without a bike. I've actually come in the car with Judy, she's shopping in Max and Spencer's and here's our friend uh, John Palmer aka Richard Turpin. Try and show you uh, the castle on my way back to pick up Judy but uh, I, I want to have a quick look in the bike shop um, before I, uh, I go back to, uh, to find Jude so I'll see you in a bit. So what we're looking at now is Clifford's Tower and there's like stories that it was held here but I don't think any of them are true. Over here, this is what was caught in York, the sizes and where the prison is. It's now the Castle Museum and rumour has it that's where he was held prisoner and apparently the cell's still there and as you can see on the top of it there's uh, where he was tried. Towers next to it. And then there's modern York. Where he's buried is... Can you see the church tower in the distance? That's basically where St George's is. Sort of this, this way. Shakespeare Theatre are on tour. Excuse the Hope this has been something a bit different, and I'll say bye bye for now. Ta ta!